Hey everybody, Jason here from Trendify, and today we're going to talk about one of my new favorite topics, generating beautiful AI imagery using Midjourney. And we're also going to cover a few different hacks that I've been using to generate incredible images, and we'll get into it right now. One thing I do want to point out is that there are several different pricing tiers for Midjourney. You can start off on the free trial and it will give you a few different outputs, but I recommend upgrading to the $30 per month plan at least. That's what I'm on right now. And it gives me unlimited ability to generate images. Once you start doing this, you're going to get hooked. And for $10 a month, you don't get that many of them. I think you get like 200 outputs. And I promise you, I've already gone way past that because you're going to be hooked and continue to use this. And then I haven't upgraded to the pro plan, but if I want to scale this up really big and start creating businesses out of using AI and using Midjourney, then I probably would upgrade to this. But the $30 plan is what I'm on right now. And that's what I recommend you try out once you get the hang of it and use your free trial up. So the first thing you're going to need is a Discord server account. And all you have to do is go to discord.com. You can set one up for free. And then once you do, you can log in and you'll go to a place that looks like this. Now your dashboard may look a little bit different because I'm already a part of several servers, but this is the overall framework of what it will look like. Next, what we need is a Midjourney account. So we just go to midjourney.com. And once we're there, we can actually join the public beta, or if you already have an account, you can sign in, but let's click join the beta. Okay, and then once you have a Discord account connected to your computer, you just click continue to Discord. Now we are inside the Midjourney Discord server, and there's a couple things I want you to notice here. Number one, you're gonna go down and see all these general categories here. And we can go into any one of these channels and start generating images. But it gets a little cumbersome in here because everyone is in here generating their own images. So I'm going to show you how to make it a lot easier on yourself before you even get started. So what we're going to do is go over here and click this little add server button. As soon as we do, we're going to click create my own and then for me and my friends. And then you can call it whatever you want. Let's just call it demo server. Hit create. And now you'll see that that server is here on my left category here. So what we're going to do now is go back to the mid journey bot here and we're going to find the mid journey bot. We're just going to click it here and then click add to server. And then we're going to select the server that we just created, which is the demo server and click continue and then approve all of these and authorize it. Beep, boop, boop, beep. And now that it's authorized, we can go back to our demo server and we have a server here that will only speak with the Midjourney account by itself. So you don't have to worry about everyone else seeing your images and you interacting with all of them. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. Now that we're inside of our server and we can start asking it to generate images for us. So let's get into how to do that. So the way that we start any of these is with a prompt. And the way that we access that prompt is we just do forward slash and then imagine and hit enter. And now we have the ability to ask it to create anything that we want. But this particular tutorial is how to actually upload your own images into the Midjourney server and get it to output something that's based on what you've already uploaded. So say a selfie of yourself. You wanted to upload a picture of yourself and put it in some weird circumstance getting chased by lions or in space or on the moon or whatever your mind can create. Midjourney will give you some variation of that. If you saw the thumbnail of this video, I created several that were a picture of me, but in a robotic sense with neon eyes and, and half man, half robot. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this, but let me just show you how to do this. So what we're going to do is we need to show where that image is coming from. And in order to do that, they need a URL of that image. So what we need to do to get started is upload pictures of ourselves or whatever we want the image to use references of in order to create its new AI generated image. And the way that we do that is, is hit this plus sign here. And that will allow us to upload a file or you can just drag it in here as well. But I'm just gonna upload it here. So click upload. And then I'm going to find a picture of myself here. So there's a handsome picture of me, hit enter. And now it's processed that image. And now I can get a URL based on this image. You could have just drugged the picture in here as well. And then I just tap the image and then I click copy image address. And then I can go back to the server here and start creating some content out of it. So let's do forward slash imagine, enter. Then I'm going to put paste the picture of myself here. And there's the picture of me. This is the actual URL that I just took from the Discord server. And then some things that I've found useful is to put male, if I'm a male, if I identify as a male, I guess. And then start saying what scenario you want that to be in. Let's just say on the moon. And we'll do several of these so you can kind of see the idea here. And we'll get more and more specific 
specific as we go. So you can see it's converted that long link into this Midjourney bot link and it just says mail on the moon. And then I'm using version five of Midjourney. Okay, after about a minute of waiting, it generated these four images. Now putting faces into Midjourney and expecting to get exactly what you put in is sometimes a little tricky, but it is getting better and better. And I'm going to show you some ways to refine this to get an even closer resemblance of yourself if you're uploading a selfie. But you can see here that this is divided into four different quadrants. This is one, two, three, and four, which also references these boxes down here. So this is version one, two, three, four. And what these two different things stand for is upscale, which means make a bigger image of the one that you like. So upscale one, upscale two, upscale three, upscale four. And then if you kind of like this, but you want slightly different options, then you can click V for variation. So variations of one, variations of two, three, and four. So let's just try variations of three right here. Okay, so these are the four variations of the original image that it that we requested. So this is box number three again, and it gave us four variations of that. They're all pretty similar, but I just want you to get the overall concept. Now, going back to this, if I didn't like any of this right now, I could hit this little regenerate and it would give me four brand new options to choose from. But we've used a pretty broad search with this. So I want to show you how to start refining this and stylizing it, making it based around maybe a certain artist. I'll show you a bunch of really cool stuff that you can start doing to make these images really cool. So let's get into that. So one thing that I found that made my images pop even more and actually resemble me even more than other things is by taking the original photos that I have and going to Canva and removing the background and zooming into my face even more. Because most of the time bringing in this suit concept as well in all the pictures. So I'm trying to avoid that. I just want to use my face in different scenarios. So what we'll do is go to Canva. I'll show you how to do that really quickly and then we'll come back here. All right, here we are inside of Canva and all I'm doing here is just tapping this image. Then I'm doing edit photo and then I'm doing background remover. And then I'm going to scale this up. It'll get a little pixelated, but that's okay for this example. And then I'm going to try to get as close to just my face as possible. And then I have another image as well that I've done down here. I'm gonna remove the background already. So we'll scale this one up, do the same thing. You can see it's getting a little blurry, but that's okay. Then I'm just gonna download both of these with the white background. And this is just what I've been doing. You may try something else and it works even better for you, but this has really helped me get a little bit closer to what my face actually looks like in the outputs of these servers. So let's get back over to Mid Journey. Okay, so we're back at Mid Journey. You can see these pictures aren't that great. So let's just snazz these up a little bit. I'll show you a little bit more how to refine your searches and your prompts and make sure that you're getting really cool outputs here. So let's upload the two new images that I just downloaded from Canva. Okay, so we have both of these. I'm just going to hit enter. That will bring both of these headshots in. And then again, I can forward slash imagine. And then I pick the image, right click. Copy image address, go back here, paste the image, put a space, and then you can actually upload multiple photos. So Midjourney has more of a reference of what to pull from. Unless you were a major celebrity, then I would already have like a bunch of Brad Pitt pictures on, on the internet that it can pull from. But for you, uh, if you're not a major celebrity, then this is what you'd be doing to give it more points of reference. So copy image address. And then let me put up uh, some prompts here so you can actually see how to really refine this and make a really cool image. All right, so I have my two pictures uploaded and I added a lot more detail to this. And I want you to just get the idea that the more valuable input that you can give Mid Journey, the better output you'll get. So the more detail you can be, you can describe entire scenarios. You can even use ChatGPT to give you prompts to fill into this. And I'll show you some other ways to get some ideas on how to refine the way that you're asking for these images. But I just want you to kind of see what I put here. So I put ultra realistic. I put 85 millimeter. That's the size of the lens. I put DSLR for the camera. I also put Batman because I think uh, I want to see if it'll make some kind of superhero for me. I put night, I put cinematic, and I also, when you put these two little dashes, that's dash dash and then AR, that means aspect ratio. So how do you want the dimensions of the actual image? I want this to be a wider image than versus a uh, up and down tall one. And then this is a very crucial thing that I've been adding to these. And that is dash dash IW2. That means image weight two and two is the highest currently that you can use. And what that means is as close to these images as possible, as far as image weight goes. So how much value is it putting on the source images? If it's, you can go down to 0.5. So if you want it to kind of look like that picture, but doesn't have to be exactly, then you can have a lower image weight, but I like to put two. It still doesn't make it perfect, but it makes it a lot closer than it was. And then one other thing I'm going to add is mail. 
at the beginning. And the reason I'm doing that is sometimes what it does for me, for whatever reason, and I've seen it do it to other people too, is it adds like long hair and makes me look more feminine if I don't uh, put this. So for whatever reason, I've been putting this and it's been working. So let's see what this generates for us. And I wanted you guys to kind of see the process here. It's really cool when you can start seeing this transform from something that is just generated from the internet. You can start seeing some faces appear and uh, sometimes it looks like it's going to be kind of creepy and then it turns out pretty cool. Other times it looks like it's going to look just like you and then it turns into something really creepy. But either way, uh, it's really fun to kind of see the percentage going up and up and up 31%. This is what it's created so far. And this one looks like it's going to be kind of cool. That one's kind of mysterious and this one looks kind of evil let's see what we get here okay so that one ended up turning out really weird this one is a little cut off i'd say that looks the most like me but not exactly so uh, but they all look cinematic they look dark some elements of batman i guess but let's just totally regenerate all of these and see if we can get a few more options here all right, we're back and I did a few different versions. I did this and I didn't really like any of these. I guess that looks probably closest to me, but not really. And then I did, I added this full body context because I noticed the challenge I guess I'm having is I zoom these in so much that I told you to do at the beginning that it's only giving me very closely zoomed in face and not really giving me much of a torso. I even tried, I thought maybe it would put me like in a full Batman suit or something, but it didn't do that. It did give me a little bit more room here. That one's kind of cool, but still not quite what I was looking for. But let's just say I like this one and I wanted to do one more variation and then I'll show you how to really expand on this fully and then we'll wrap up here. All right, we're back and I got a few really cool variations. I, I really like that one, even though it doesn't look exactly like me, it looks kind of close. And then I ended up uh, upscaling that one. Thought it was kind of cool. And then what I did was I uploaded this headshot of myself as more of a full body. I thought maybe with the black, it might give me like a full Batman suit or something. And what I got was, I don't know what this was. The shirt's kind of falling apart and I'm a, a bit bigger. This one does have a Batman logo on it, which is kind of cool, but it doesn't really look like me. I'd probably make some more variations of this and you just keep doing this over and over again. So you can see if you only have 25 outputs with the free version, how quickly you can go through that. And then you're gonna wanna get hooked on this and your friends are gonna want you to do pictures of them and then you would start creating. This is not even creating like the digital art that we're, I'm going to show you in a bunch of other videos in the future and how to make money with this stuff. But just playing around doing this for your friends and family and yourself, you're going to burn through the 25 credits very quickly. So uh, I recommend upgrading again to that $30 uh, dollar plan. That's, I don't make any money off of that. It's just what I am on right now. And I think you're going to want to be on it too if you start playing around with this. So now let me show you some really cool ways to add an artist flair to your images. So let me pause this and I'll be back in just a second. This site is going to be linked down below and it's basically a library that this person has put together to give you all the prompts that you need to make this style of image based on the images that you've uploaded or if you just want a general image like you wanted some celebrity to look like this, you could do that. So you can do all kinds of really cool stuff but I'll just show you an example and I'll, again, I'll link this down below so you can pull from it. Let's do something totally out there like this. And once you click on this, then all you have to do is you go down to the actual name of this artist and it's basically inside of Mid Journey, it knows what these artists typically, what their art looks like. So it tries to generate something around what uh, you've requested based on that style of art. So let me go back to Mid Journey and I'll show you how this works and hopefully it will work. Okay, for this, we're going to again do forward slash imagine. Pick this image, let's do this one. Copy image address paste it here and then we're going to go back to that other site get that name again then we just hit the hit it to copy and then we go back to our discord server and then we do art by buy out then i'm also going to do dash dash image weight two again i probably need to put that before let's see and this v5 is mid journey v5 so that's why it's there so now let's wait for this output. All right, so we just got our results and I don't like any of these, but uh, I will say that it did put the really cool background here. I don't know why it didn't change my actual image and that one is crazy, but you can kind of see, you can play around with this and just start uh, adding some different flares to it. We'll go back to this site again and just look at all the different options of illustration. So maybe I need to add more descriptors like illustration by or something like that. Let's try that one more time. So let's see, Neil Adams. Let's copy that and I'll go back to my Discord. Illustration by Neil Adams. Okay, so we just got the results back. They're actually pretty cool. If you look at 
Neil Adams and some of his artwork. And I could probably refine this even more by saying comic book illustration or something like that. But overall, pretty cool. I really like this. And I think you guys, if you click the link down below, you'll be able to uh, access that too. I, I don't know who put it together. It's this uh, person here, Andre Kovalev. So thank you so much for putting this together, but I've been using it quite a bit to generate images and I really like it and it seems to be free. So I appreciate it. If you guys are getting some value out of this, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. I plan on doing a lot more on not only mid journey and chat GPT, but how you actually use this new AI technology as a whole to make more money, to spin off businesses, do all kinds of really cool stuff online that can not only really be creative, but also make you a ton of money. So with that, I really appreciate your time. Hopefully you got some value out of this and I'll talk to you again on the next video.